Good morning. It's the sixth Sunday after Epiphany, and I'm going to try to tell us every week kind of what goes on this Sunday. There are blessings and woes in these lessons on this sixth Sunday, and we would do well to listen closely to who is blessed and who the woes are aimed for. So today we will find our place among the crowd listening to Jesus. I am glad that we have a chance to worship together, glad our weather's getting nice and we have some sunshine today. Hopefully the cold will go away soon. Today is kind of a, a triple holiday almost in the United States, right? <laughs> it's the, we've got, we could celebrate Valentine's Day, we could celebrate the Super Bowl, we could celebrate um, Mardi Gras, which is coming up soon. So, in light of that, there's a lot crammed into one short season here. Uh, today we have confirmation at noon for the kiddos and Bible study at 10.30 tomorrow. The kids have Sunday school with Miss Vicki in a minute after the children's sermon. And um, next Sunday we're having our chili cook-off, so if you want to cook chili or cornbread, see Linda. She has some uh, information about it. She wants to know who's competing in the chili contest. And then um, the 27th, there's going to be a pancake breakfast. And so the kids will be doing that, and that's to sort of symbolize the end of the season after Epiphany and, and start the season of Lent that's coming up soon. Um, be sure you look at your Lent schedule, because we are going to be sharing some of our Wednesday services with uh, St. Stephen. So, We'll be over here some, we'll be over there some, and the schedule is in your uh, newsletter. If you want to, you should probably just print you a copy of that page and stick it on the fridge so you'll know where we're going to be on which times. Um, Linda has something that she wants to say. Linda, talk use my microphone. First, first of all, I'm trying to get a count, for, you know, get an idea how many people we have to uh, plan on for the chili cook-off. How many are you, uh, is, who is planning to come? Quick, get to do this. Who likes chili? Thank you. And who is going to make, cook, who plans to make chili and enter the contest? Okay, I see. Okay, that's about that. Okay. Well, today I'm selling tickets and... We need, you know, get an idea how many's coming. If you would stop by my table, and you don't have to buy your tickets today, but if you just let me put you down on the list so I know for a head count, because we've got, we, you know, we just need, need to know who to meet, how many to plan for. And I think that's about it. Well, the tickets will be on sale next, next Sunday morning and also at the door. Thank you. And Judy wanted to know if any strong, especially strong men could help her move something after church. And by help, I think she means do it for her, right? <laughs> Are there any other announcements that we need to hear today? Okay, then uh, let's see. We're glad today to have Peggy Sigers with us. Peggy was here last Sunday, and I didn't know her name last Sunday, so we have welcome Peggy with us today. She lives, in, uh, she lives in the apartments, right, Peggy? Okay, we're glad to have her here. Um, let's st say together our mission statement, so please join me. We, the people of Holy Trinity, are called to glorify God by building vibrant relationships with Jesus and joyfully sharing his message with others. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share the peace with those around you. Wave or give the peace sign or smile or something there. We're glad to have you all here today. Let's pray. Thanks be to you, Lord God, for our blessings of health and happiness, for our food and daily necessities that you see that we have. Help us to look around to see others in need, that we will love them the way that you love us, 
May we be a church that is always spreading the gospel, your good news given to the world. In your name we pray. Amen. And let's listen to the prelude as our hearts uh, prepare for worship. I'd like to ask the kids to come on down and uh, help me with the youth sermon. Come on down. Yeah. Let's sit in a circle. Can we sit in a circle? There we go. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. That way we can see each other. I've got a lot of kids today. Great. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, super. Okay, so what is tomorrow? Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. And what is the most uh, famous shape for Valentine's? Heart, a heart. A heart. You're right about that. The heart is not the it's shape of the. Yeah, the real, the real heart, the pumping heart. Yeah. It's a symbolic, a symbolic uh, sign of love. Okay, good. So the, the heart that we're talking about is that shape right there. Yeah, and it's a, it's a symbol of love. You're so right. Do our hearts always love? Do we no. always love? No. Sometimes do we do the wrong things and not love? A lot. Have you ever said anything ugly to your parents? Mm. Yeah, I bet you have. Yeah. I one time I told my mother she was a meanie. Oh, that wasn't good, was it? I just got a spanking, I think. Yeah. <laughs> a meanie. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. I'm being the meanie. You're so right about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now that's tomorrow. Are you having anything <coughs> special at school tomorrow? Are you? Uh, we, um, we, uh, we break tomorrow. We don't have school. We break you don't. Okay. Candy to our class, and then we share it to all the people. That's great. So you bring candy to your classroom. Do you bring little Valentine cards? Anybody? They don't do that anymore. Okay. Oh. Oh, okay, you have to pay for things at your party? Oh, that's odd. Uh, oh, okay. This sounds like a holiday, doesn't it? Sort of. Okay, what's what's today? Tomorrow's Monday, it's Valentine's Day. What's today? Sunday. Sunday. And you know what Martin Luther said? He said Every Sunday is like a little Easter. Hmm, is that's Easter on Sunday this time? Always. Easter's always on Sunday. Yeah. But 
but it, think about every Sunday being a little Easter. What's the most uh, important symbol of Easter and Sundays? What's the Look behind us. Look behind us. The cross. Yeah, the most important symbol of Easter is the cross. Why is the cross the most important symbol of Easter? Okay, what's, I want to know what Lucy has to say. Because Jesus was crucified on the cross and then he came. Right. That was the day he rose from the grave. That's exactly right. So we've got hearts tomorrow. We've got crosses today. Do hearts and crosses go together? Uh, how about that? She's already looked at the front of the bulletin. She said it's on the bulletin, so yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do crosses and hearts have to do with each other anyway? Uh, they involve love. How does the cross involve love? Mm. To save our lives. So Jesus loves us so much, right? To save, us from our sins. to save us from our sins. So the cross really does represent love. It's another symbol of love. Hearts and crosses, they both represent love. It's the best kind of love. Over there? Yeah. Okay. Okay, shall we pray and thank God for love, for God's love? Can you repeat after me today? In the prayer, thank you, Jesus, for giving your love to us, and thank you for the cross that saves us from our sin. Amen. Okay, thank you. Y'all go to Sunday school. Hey, wait, wait, I was about to forget something. I have something. Today, our, our thing, our gift represents hearts. Maybe when it's Easter, it'll represent the cross. Oh, these are called um, Smarties, by the way. Smarties. And I sure hope they work. <laughs> Did anybody get that? <laughs> is, yeah, I know that. That's been fabulous. And she's going to be 16, isn't she? Please stand and let's sing.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the beginning was the Word. In the Word was life. The Word became flesh and lived among us. Let's pray together. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And we'll sit to hear the word of God. And... Uh, Robin will introduce the tune, and the black, the heavy black, is to be sung by everyone, and I'll read the light print. those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of the scoffers. In God's word is their delight, they pursue it day and night. They are planted like trees, planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, and their leaves do not wither. Blessed are they, the Lord will bless all their efforts and success. The wicked are not so, but are like the shaft that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Let God's law be our delight to Pursue it day and night. For God knows the way of the righteous. Let us strive both night and day, God's good precepts to obey. But the way of the wicked is doomed. Let us pray the Lord to bless all our efforts with. A reading from Jeremiah. These verses compose a poem that is part of a larger collection of wisdom sayings 
that contrasts two ways of life. Life with God brings blessing. The power and vitality of God is active in our life. Life without God brings a curse, the power of death. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and when its leaves shall, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel today is from the Gospel of Luke, according to the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After choosing his twelve apostles, Jesus teaches a crowd of followers about the nature and demands of discipleship. He begins his great sermon with surprising statements about who is truly blessed in the eyes of God. And the Gospel begins with verse 17. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great crowd of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him. For power came out of him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please sit. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to hear your word. May it speak to our hearts this day in all of our busyness and calm us with your love. Amen. Well, first, let me say happy Valentine's Day tomorrow. All the adults are probably not quite as excited about it as the kids are. But if you like chocolate, you might be excited about it. So hopefully you get something you like, even if you just go buy it for yourself. 
right? It's okay to do that. A few of you might remember an old song that I can't sing, but however, I wish I'd gotten somebody to sing. And the, the words went like this, love and marriage, love and marriage, they go together like a horse and carriage. This I tell you, brother, you can't have one without the other, right? I could see some of you mouthing those words with me. Yeah, that's an old song. It used to be sung by Frank Sinatra for one, and love and marriage, they go together. For this day, it's more like I said with the kids, hearts and crosses, hearts and crosses. They go together like, I don't know, I can't think of anything right now that rhymes with crosses, but uh, do they go together? Or maybe blessings and woes, blessings and woes. Do they go together? We heard about them in the gospel reading. Today we have two strong symbols that are competing for our attention this Sunday. We've got the cross and we've got the heart trying to grab our attention today. A few years ago, it turned out that Ash Wednesday was on Valentine's Day. And it hadn't happened in like 73 years or something like that. It'd been a long, long time. And probably nobody remembered that. But Bishop Eaton, who's our um, national bishop of the ELCA, she wrote an article about it. And she said, it's an odd pairing if you think about it. Hearts and crosses, hearts and crosses. They go together. Well, I kind of agree that it is kind of an odd pairing. Maybe opposites attract. You know, we talk about as Lutherans being saints and sinners. Those are opposites, maybe. Uh, law and gospel, those are opposites. So maybe hearts and crosses are, maybe they're not. As I started going through these readings today and, and combing through something in them, I found the word heart mentioned at least four times. Now it was mentioned, I think, three times in Jeremiah and once in the prayers. So these aren't special readings just because tomorrow's Valentine's Day. These are our standards readings. And because heart's mentioned several times, it must be trying to tell us something. It's true that the heart that the Jeremiah reading talks about is the human heart, which is uh, sometimes devious, sometimes fickle, sometimes our heart doesn't always represent love, but like one of the kids mentioned, you know, our heart is not in the shape of that heart we use for Valentine's Day to represent love. Our hearts can turn away from God. So when we generally speak about a heart during this season, we're speaking about that shape of a heart that we see so much, especially if you're on uh, Facebook, you see a lot about Valentine's Day. And uh, today we're talking about the love of Christ, the blessings that he gives us. He says, the poor are blessed, the hungry are blessed, those who weep, those who are hated. That just doesn't sound right. It, we don't tend to think of those people as being blessed. And then there's that word blessed, which I think blessed is kind of a slippery word. It, it tends to get overused. Um, the word blessed now has sort of become equated with lucky. I was reading the other day uh, some posts on Facebook, which you're going to figure out I probably spend too much time on Facebook, um, scrolling through, reading things. But this is one way I keep up with you, just to let you know. <laughs> But some things on Facebook were like, uh, I found strawberries on sale today at the grocery store. I am so blessed. And I thought, no, you're lucky when you found strawberries on sale. And then another one was, I found the perfect parking place today. And then hashtag blessed. Is finding the perfect parking place being blessed? I, I, I think it's overused anyway. I think a blessing has more to do with things that um, we, don't have, we don't have any control over. When I looked at these blessing statements today and I did some studying on it, I, I used a, a book that's called a social science commentary for the times of the gospel. And in that book it said during Jesus' time to be blessed, the word blessed, 
meant more like to be a privileged recipient of divine favor. Now, just because you find the right parking place, I don't think necessarily means you've been given some divine favor. So let's say today uh, that instead of saying blessed for these blessings. So instead of saying blessed, let's go. Privileged with divine favor are the poor, the hungry, the weeping, the hated. You know, to us, it may not look like they're privileged with divine favor, but it does make blessed sound better to me. God is watching out for those who are poor, hungry, weeping. God is favoring them, especially in places like the Hope House. I would say, I would definitely call the Hope House a blessing because it feeds people uh, without homes, at least two meals a day, a breakfast and a lunch. I would say places like our food pantry is a blessing. We give foods to the uh, staple foods to the food pantry, and they, in turn, bless families with food, food to take home and cook. Now, in this gospel reading today, there is also some gloom, some gloomy-sounding warnings that made me stop and listen. Woe to the rich. Woe to those who are full. Woe to those who are laughing. Woe to those who are spoken well of. Woe, W-O-E there. But I think it means a lot like W-H-O-A, woe. If you have a lot and all is well in your life, woe. In other words, stop like a horse, you know, like we tell the horse to woe. Woe and pay attention. This is a warning to us. You've got plenty. It's time for you to look around. Whoa. There are people around you who may desperately need you to share. Whoa. So even when things are great in our lives, which I'd say for most of us, things are pretty great. We have enough to eat. We have happiness in our lives for the most part. We have homes to live in and clothing to wear. It's time for us to woe, to stop and look around. We need God with us even when things are great. I've had parishioners in the past in various places tell me, Pastor, I do not like it when you preach bad news. And I said, you know what? If you don't hear the bad news, you probably don't think you need the good news. Because if you can't look around you and see anything bad, you think everything's great, you probably don't think you need God in your life. So often I was told, just preach the good news and stop. Well, I'm going to still, we're people of law and gospel, Lutherans are, so I will continue to preach law and gospel. I call it bad news and good news. Yes, I do try to preach some bad news. We all have had bad news in our lives and if you haven't had any bad news in your life you haven't lived long enough you've all all lost somebody in your life you've all had times maybe when you didn't have a job when you needed a job when you went to the grocery store and you wondered how am i going to pay for this or how are we going to take care of this new baby that we've got how are we going to do all these things in our lives we've had bad moments and if we don't have them right now that's great, but we have had them or we will have them again in the future. We know bad times will come because that's just the way human life is. So as I hear lots of people say, I am so blessed. And it's true, we are so blessed. But let's count our blessings, not just in we found strawberries on sale at the grocery store. But let's look at the big things of blessings. Look at your health. Even though it may not be the health that you really want, you got more health than a lot of people. Or look at your happiness. Look at your necessities in life. Those are blessings from God. And I think that God's love is big enough to reach out to us 
Even sometimes when we are in the middle of doing things we shouldn't, like gossiping or having doubts or being hypocrites, uh, God is still there loving us and reaching out to us. Is our love big enough to reach out to others, to pull others in, to reach out with a hug when somebody's sad, to reach out with uh, a meal when somebody's uh, had a loss in their lives? They're sick. They don't feel like cooking. Our, is our love big enough to do that? Bishop Eaton sums up the cross and the heart by saying hearts and crosses aren't incompatible, but hearts and crosses are inseparable. And she goes on to say the history of all salvation since the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is just one long love story of God reaching out and loving us, or a love story between God and God's creation, a love story between God and humankind, God and God's people. We were created for love. We were created out of love, real love. And God's love is unflinching, deep love. Love that is true enough to always be honest. So if we were created by God's love, but we are sinners, and we know that sometimes we are going to miss the mark. Sometimes we are going to have bad times in our lives. What's going to happen with that conflict? And I just have to say, whoa, stop and contemplate that God in Christ Jesus chose to take on the pain and suffering of the cross to forgive us and heal us and free us. And free us from what? Not from never having anything bad, but to free us from the fear of sin taking over our lives, to free us from the fear of death for ourselves or our loved ones. We don't have to fear it. To free us from the fear that evil is going to take charge of our lives, because it's not. We are called to confess our sins and repent. That word repent, I've talked about before, means turn your life around. It doesn't mean just say you're sorry, but repent means turn your life around in your actions as well as your words. Does God forgive us because we're so good at forget confessing? No. Does God forgive us because we're so good at telling God how sorry we are that we did something? No. And how do we go about confessing? Every Sunday we have confession and forgiveness in our service. Consider the thief on the cross. I was reminded of him the other day, again, on Facebook. And I shared that, that um, post because he confessed simply, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. That was his simple confession. He would never live to study his Bible. He would never live to attend church or the synagogue. He would never be able to make amends to Jesus for his sins. Your confession doesn't have to be complicated. It can be easy. It can be three short words. I'm so sorry. God is going to forgive us because love is the character of God. And God's love, shown in the cross, doesn't depend on what we have done. It depends on what God has done for us. And I often go to funerals in other denominations and I hear the pastor say, we know where this person is going because of what they've done. And I want to always stand up in the middle of the funeral and go, no, no, it's not what this person did. It's what God has done for us through Christ Jesus. Love is the promise that God forgives us. God is lavish, and he shares that love with us freely. So it turns out that hearts and the cross absolutely do go together. They're both symbols of love. And today is a valentine to us from God. It's a valentine that invites us to enter deeply into the mystery of God's love and to honestly examine ourselves. It starts with the journey to the cross and the passionate love that God has shown through us through the passion of Christ. 
and after the cross, the resurrection, and then the ascension. And it means no more pretense on my, our parts, but freedom. Yes, love is at the very heart of the cross. Love is the cross. And you can't have one without the other. Amen. Please stand. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God 
and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all our sins. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Blessed are those who trust is in you. Strengthen the faith of those who profess your name and bring re reassurance to those who doubt or fear. Through your church, speak continued blessing into the world. God of grace, to those who trust in you are like trees planted by streams of water. Bless the fruit trees with an abundant harvest. Protect rainforests from destruction. Restore land that has eroded after deforestation. Resurrect woodlands after forest fires. God of grace, Search the hearts of those who govern, that they lead with humility. Inspire leaders to collaborate on policies that protect people and the planet. Sustain truth-tellers and social movements that challenge society to become more honest and just. God of grace, send your blessing of mercy upon those who, for, who long for consolation. Tend to those struggling with poverty, unemployment, or uncertainty. Provide for all who are hungry. Console those who face persecution. Grant peace to all who suffer. We pray especially for Cecile, Caleb, LD, Ruth, Jean, Don, Susan, and Kathy, and those we name in our hearts and mind. God of grace, renew this congregation in our shared mission. As we plan and dream for the future you are preparing, inspire us by the examples of Martin Luther and all the reformers. Bless new projects and a new ministry partnerships. God of grace, God be with us as we celebrate with those who have an anniversary of their birth or marriage this week, especially Sharon Maloney, Emma Layton, Joe Fielder, and John and Sandy Barrington. God of grace, Christ is raised from the dead, and so we cling to the hope of the resurrection. We praise you for the lives of the saints who lived and died in the hope of eternal life with you. God of grace, Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift our homebound to you as well. John and, uh, Don and Jimmy Davis, Nyla Farley, Mary Jones, John Barrington, and Bill McCleary. These and all of our prayers we lift to you in confidence and in faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. I ask you to please sit while we uh, offer our gifts to the Lord. Please stand and sing.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. Lord, remember us and teach us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive this blessing. May Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. And let's joyfully sing on our way rejoicing. Mm -hmm. 